I was planning on doing this video for a while now, but first I wanted to reread the book. Um, I didn't do that because I went to St. Petersburg a month ago and I will stay here for at least two more months. We'll see if I can get back in the end of May. But right now seems like the perfect timing to do this video. So I'm just going to use my memory from when I read the book a year ago and um, I'll use some notes that I uh, made back then. So the topic I want to talk about is the end of the world and Mircea Eliade uh, discusses this extensively in his books. Mircea Eliade was a Romanian uh, historian and his ideas are quite in line with the ideas of Carl Jung. Eliade explains that throughout history there have been a lot of these tiny tribes all over the world in all kinds of places and these tribes they all had their mythologies and their little religions and in all of these religions in all of these myths there is this story of the the end of the world and the creation of the world. All these creation myths they talk about how at first everything was pure chaos. Everything was the cosmogonic waters and water is chaos. And from within this chaos Orda was born. The gods or one god created the cosmos in its pure perfection. Like for example in Christianity we can see that First there was chaos, there was nothing, but then God created the world, he created the cosmos, and he created it in its perfection. He created paradise and Adam and Eve, they could live in this perfect state of being. But then, after this state of perfection, there comes the decline. And that's what we can see back in all of these creation myths. First there's chaos, then there is the perfect cosmos and then there's the decline. The decline back to the chaos, back to the cosmogonic waters. So when the world goes from pure perfection in a decline towards chaos, that's what we call the end of the world. And what is so interesting is that this decline is often described in a way of uh, the flood or a great conflagration. And um, so that has to do with water or fire. Water is chaos, it's matter, it's the feminine. And fire, it's spirit, it is order, it's the masculine. And it's interesting that the last few decades people talk so much about climate change, global warming. Global warming, it's the conflagration, it's the fire. And they also talk about the rising sea level, the floods, the waters. And they warn for the end of the world. People are actually genuinely afraid that the world is going to end, the world is going to die. But what we can see from these myths is that this story is so ancient, so, so old and it's so... It's so rooted in our unconscious. But the question is, what does it actually mean that the world is going to end? Do we have to interpret this in a materialistic manner? Is the actual world going to end? Or do we have to interpret this in a more symbolic sense? At one point, Eliade starts to talk about art. He explains that the artist right now is actually on purpose trying to demolish art. He is trying to end the world of art, to bring it back to its cosmogonic chaos. And then, when it is all ended, he can start over again and make it perfect. It's because this process of the chaos, then perfection, and then the decline again, towards chaos is so deeply rooted within us. And so the artist might not be conscious about this process right now, but it is what is happening. What's also interesting is that Iliad explains that 
the Greeks, they believed that the artist was possessed by the muses. And the muses are the daughters of Mnemosyne. I'm sorry for my pronunciation, I have no clue how to say that. Mnemosyne is omniscient. She knows everything. She knows what has been, she knows what is, and she knows what will be. So when the artist is possessed by the muses, by the daughters of Mnemosyne, then this divine knowledge of what will be resonates within the artist, within his own art. And it is then very interesting to see how art developed in the last ages, because we can see a clear decline in, in beauty and in skills. And so eventually this, this is not just about art, it's about society as a whole. The artist predicts in his art what the future of society is going to be. And at this point it's not very promising, no. So lately I've been to quite some art museums and what you can see is that in every museum um, the tour starts with great art, great paintings, great skills and you're overwhelmed by this beauty and then slowly as we go further in time the art becomes ugly and repulsive and eventually it's just you're, you're literally looking at garbage literally uh, there's no skill there, there is no beauty it's just garbage and this is a prediction of how society will be in the near future so yeah and you can also see it in architecture and in theater and all these art forms for example here in St. Petersburg the center is so beautiful there are so many beautiful buildings and then the part where I live now it's pure ugliness it's very dystopian and um, it's very depressing. So to take this together, the decline of art is a process, an unconscious process of the artist to predict how society is going to progress. But it's also an unconscious process to completely demolish art so the artist can start over again from a tabula rasa. And so this also means that it's not just the artist who is trying to destroy art, since we can see in a lot of ways of life that things are declining. This process lives in all of humanity. We are declining and declining, and it's not like we want to make things better. It's also what Dostoevsky described. We don't want to make things better. We are actually in love with suffering. So in this unconscious process, we want to break down everything we know, everything we are, so we can take things back to chaos, to its original form, and start over from there and create perfection. So, and finally, you can see this whole process, this whole idea, also play itself out in society right now concerning the corona crisis. So there has been this idea for the last decades about open borders and the whole world is our home and there are no countries and everybody can go wherever they want. And now because of this disease, because of this virus, suddenly all borders close down. This disease is actually the end of the world, the end of the idea of an open border globalist worldview. And so eventually I think this, this approach of the end of the world and wanting the world to end so we can start over again, I think it's a very clever worldview and I think it, you can explain a lot by it. And so I would recommend everyone to read Eliade because it's very interesting.
So and finally I want to thank you all for watching and thank you for engaging in my videos. For the last video I got so many responses and there were big big messages and I have read everything but I couldn't answer everything because it was a lot but I'm very grateful that people are putting an effort to it to try to explain me things because I learn a lot from you guys and so I'm very very grateful that um, I actually found the the best corner of the internet um, so I, I hope you like this video um, I hope I made you think about something I hope you're going to read the book and see you at the next one <laughs>